We're on your side tonight with a shift in political power. A rude awakening came for North Carolina Republicans in 2018 when several state House and Senate districts in the once ruby red suburbs of Charlotte flipped blue. It helped Democrats break through the GOP supermajority at that time in the North Carolina General Assembly. One of those battlegrounds was the community of Ballantyne. Came as a surprise because in past years, politicians and campaign strategists often regarded the suburbs as a right-leaning stronghold. But things changed in 2016. Compare these maps from the New York Times showing how the suburban vote has shifted between elections. Democrats made big gains in the suburbs between 2016 and 2020. Republicans on that far map you can see made up some ground in 2022. You notice the red arrows coming back a bit. But in most areas, those gains were smaller than the Democratic shift in previous elections. You'll note some of these longer blue lines. The political power held within the suburbs being seen tonight just north of North Carolina in the state of Virginia. Tonight, both chambers of the state legislature are up for grabs. Some believe the results may have ripple effects far beyond the General Assembly, including the political future for the state's Republican governor and the potency of abortion rights as a political battleground. CNN's John King has more. A change of seasons in Loudoun County and a choice that will echo well beyond Virginia. Abortion is tough. I have two girls. Um, I feel personally that every woman has the right to do what she feels is right for her with her body. Nanette Meese is a registered Republican, but one of the suburban voters who changed Virginia from red to blue. Abortion and guns, those are two big things. Meese voted early for the Democrat in a critical state Senate race here. Five flyers in the mail every day for the last month. It's a lot of, a lot of money wasted. Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin is among those spending millions. Hold in the House, flip in the Senate. Hold in the House, flip in the Senate. Youngkin is not on this year's ballot, but his presidential ambitions are. Youngkin thinks he can reverse the Republican collapse in the suburbs, even while backing new abortion restrictions. If voters give him a full Republican legislature, Youngkin says Virginia will ban abortions after 15 weeks, with exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. No more are we going to allow bureaucrats to tell folks that parents don't belong in the classroom. Yeah. Yet no abortion mention in his rally speech. You said you're for tax cuts, you're for parental rights, you're for more funding for police. Isn't it strong leadership to say, I'm for this too? It is very clear where I stand on this. We're running a big advertising campaign. Here's the truth. There is no ban. Virginia Republicans support a reasonable 15-week limit. Mega Republicans like Juan Pablo Segura want to ban abortions in Virginia. Criminalizing abortions is wrong. It is a giant test of whether Republicans can end a streak of punishing election losses since the Supreme Court tossed out Roe v. Wade. Discussion around abortion is one between an extreme position from the left and a reasonable position from all Republicans. The Yunkin events look like a presidential test run. This is in Henrico County, the fast-growing Richmond suburbs. Democrats hope to unseat a big Yunkin ally and prove the abortion debate still cuts their way. There's nothing reasonable about banning abortion, but that's exactly what Republican Siobhan Donovan wants to do. During the COVID lockdowns, it was Siobhan Donovan that really worked to, to get our kids back in the classrooms, and I'm deeply appreciative for that. Rachel Kulak calls herself a conservative independent, supports Donald Trump, prefers a six-week abortion ban, but is open to compromise. I don't support abortion, but if he can get it to 15 weeks, I think perhaps that's a fair middle ground. Loudoun County is 40 miles west of Washington, D.C. It still leaned red when G. Van Fleet moved here 18 years ago. Loudoun was home to just shy of 100,000 people then. It is more than four times that now, and 20% of the county's voters are Asian. My neighbors are Indians, are Vietnamese, Korea, and I'm Chinese. And uh, if you talk about diversity, this is a very diverse area. It's also become more democratic out here. Does that bother you? It bothers me, yes. South Carolina-born Gladys Burke is part of Loudoun's evolution. She is an independent who leans blue, owns a promotional products business, and takes issue with Youngkin's education agenda. This thing about um, not teaching black history in the schools, not recognizing our black history, because I lived it. But still undecided on the state Senate race that could tip the balance of power.
I've never been this torn before. But you're open to some restriction. Absolutely. Abortion, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even if she votes Republican this time, Burke says Youngkin is wrong to think Virginia will return to red next year. Absolutely, Biden, 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 Biden. You like him? <laughs> absolutely. I think he's done a great job. Nanette Meese is the face of Virginia's suburban shift. Her last Republican vote for president, George W. Bush, back in 2004. That is the last time the Republican nominee carried Loudoun County and Virginia. Still a registered Republican, but ready to cast a fifth consecutive Democratic vote for president next year, but with hesitation. I don't think he's the perfect one, but if I have to pick between him and Trump, who I would never, ever, ever vote for, it would be Biden and just pray. That's for next November. First, this year's big test. John King, CNN, Leesburg, Virginia.